please confirm if you can see my screen. All right, so this is the second uh, career exercise for the for the week. So according to what Pascal mentioned yesterday, now we're having two career exercises. Uh, one for ideas on how to improve the world, which Pascal has taken us through yesterday, and this is the second uh, exercise. So CVs. So it is essential for every one of us to. Uh, have a standard CV such that that's our first encounter, our first interface with any recruiter. Regardless of how technical you are, how good you are, in which if you don't have a solid CV that is going to represent you well out there, uh, your technical skill might not be well noticed. So we have a well outlined exercise for the for the day, and the deadline is today, which is. Uh, which must be done in around at 8 p.m. UTC. So, all right. So now we have some requirements. So the exercise is basically for you to submit your CV. And uh, this is not an, an academic CV. This is a professional CV that will be submitted to your recruiters. So even though we are in week zero, and I'm very sure some of us might not have the experience required yet, for us to you know, learn a global job in the field of machine learning, AI, Web3, or data engineering. But we need you to have a feel of what we want you to know on okay, how, to, how to develop your CV. So now, what are the requirements for this exercise? The first requirement is we want, we want to have a one-page CV and it must be in a PDF format. So I understand the fact that some of us have in the world, we already have like some experiences. We have some projects we've built in the past, which one page may not be feasible for us. However, we would like you to, you know, tailor down your experience, your project. Just include want a concise and specified CV. So that was why I want to have a one page. So we we'll still get to a session where we have a template for you, where you can just follow and use the template to develop your your CV. So I would like to balls with the requirement because the requirement are quite strict, are quite strict. We have emails, phone number, and everything. So when I get to the session, I want to explain the templates we've developed for you. Then uh, this requirement will uh, will be duly explained. So now let me, let me quickly move on to the templates. So I want, I don't want us to stay long on this call so that you can attend to some of your. Uh, assessment now this is the format we want your this is the template we've created and this is the format we appreciate you to uh to submit your cv to create your cv now we want your first name so i don't know if pascal has shared this document with us so we can have access to this template there here so you have your your you have your full name on the on the left side then you have your address your github link and don't just put this should be like a clickable link for the website or github link and your linkedin address it must be a clickable one so for the professional summary we want a 50 word summary of yourself so and also for the technical skill we have for the technical skill for the skills rather is we have because some some people do make mistakes of just including our ordinary technical skill inside our skill set however soft skills are also essential and also so the softwares you can you can use so, so soft skills like communication leadership collaboration so we have those ones here now for your work experience we want this your work experience to be in chronological order that is the most recent to uh to the earlier ones so now to the later ones rather so now we have your job title the company you've worked and then for the work experience when you are highlighting your work experience, we want to we want you to um, the, to use the method of uh, what was done and the effect of what you you did. Don't just put okay, I I collaborated. And so so when you collaborated, what was the effect of your collaboration? Did you increase your maybe the speed of your solution by fifty percent by ten percent? So you should put okay, you did so 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 so. Then what was the effect of your collaboration in your 
in the in the in the, in the uh, task you did for the company. So you have you want them in all these others, and also we will appreciate if you can have some kind of statistics in your work experience. That is like okay, after after you after your collaboration, then the response rate of your solution was. 10% was 5%. So we want those statistics to be included in the in your work experience. And however, for those that doesn't have enough or they don't have that not have work experience for now, this is just like a call for you to know you have the task ahead of you and you should have to reach out how to you have to work on how to gain experience. However, we still want you to put something on that this work experience. Perhaps be your post your post-secondary, your post-institution uh, experience or something like that. So now we have your, your education section. So now the education section, we have the name of So also for the education section, this should also be in chronological order also. So that the document you have to prepare also is one of the resources in the document that says that explain how to go about the education, things you need to, you need to take note of under the education. So we have the name of your school, uh, sorry, the name of the major you performed, the school, the country, the date, of, the, the date started, and the completion, the completion dates. So let me just let me go back here. Then, so now I don't. So the the document will be shared if it has not been shared yet. So now we have some writing tips for you on your. We have some writing tips for you. So in these writing tips, we have. Uh, can you see we have the approach, the CV sections, the CV templates, uh, excellence, CV samples, and professional CV checklist, and all. So now, I was explaining about the, these are things you can, you know, go through and digest. I use no big words there. And so I'm just trying to give you an overview of where I feel you can. Now, under the summary, under the summary, because after your program at the academy, you'll be applying for roles of a junior machine learning engineer or role of the junior data engineer and all sorts. So now, if you look at this section for the summary, you have 50 words and your 50 words must be so concise such that it must include the necessary information that any recruiter will surely definitely want to uh, give you a chance. Now, okay, which character is being pursued so now you must include your career search you must include keywords like relevant keywords in your in your cv also look at the, the number three says that the, the cv belongs to a professional not a student there must be a distinct difference between the cv you'll be preparing and the cv of someone who is still in an institution or who is still in um, maybe an undergraduate who is going to develop so this is the professional cv and also the CV authors understand that employer and novel are looking for the junior level uh, roles. However, we don't want situation by your CV will include a bunch of lies and unrealistic uh, expectation. So that is the so and we have some examples uh, of your of examples of summary of professional summaries, just like this. A data engineer who takes pride in building and monitoring data processing system. Is proficient in Python, SQL, and Batch. He's experienced in working with different databases. He also works with Apache framework, such as Kafka and Spark. So look at this one now. These are, these are what, 45 words, and it is encompassing. It includes almost everything that any recruiter would like to give such person that owns this kind of summary to give such person a chance. So we have the uh, we have more examples of this kind of summary here. So we have a number of them. So now under the education also, the one I initially skipped. So for the education, uh, we want you to want to have this in chronological order also. So and also there are some of the, if the education you know it is important, a tangible education that you know you've acquired in the past, kindly have them in your uh, in your CV. Now we have license and certification, and we have skills. So all these are things you can, you know, go through on your own and, you know, understand what we are, what we have there. In. So where my interest lies is this professional CV checklist. Now in your CV, your CV has no photo. 
so which means you know there's some cv format that has pictures i think that kind of cv is most i think is uh well, i think those in uh, the british cvs or something i think those are the kind of thing that used to have pictures however we don't want to have we don't want you to have a photo on your on your cv so the second the name is 100 percent consistent across your cv which means that the link the linkedin and the bit of your ten academic profile must have a what a consistent name profile a name of your most consistent with your name format that is you want you to have your first name middle name their last name you don't want a situation whereby you have your first name and last name or last name and first name if you have first name la middle name and last name on linkedin you want that same format on your github on your ten academic profile and on your on your cv all links must work that is they must be what's clickable you don't just have to put it there you have to use an ipad link for your uh for your link also cv is saved as pdf i think i've mentioned this off already and your your full name like the save the name format must be your full name dash cv dash can you see this so which means my own name is abdullah so i have to be my name is abdullah salah to be abdullah salah dash cv so that's how we want your cv to be saved so we have zero spelling mistakes so when you want to, for your spelling for you to check your spelling uh mistakes uh you can employ grammarly so we can i think i'm after this call i'm going to share the link to grammarly so you can install it on your pc you can install it on your mobile so you can always check for your mistakes so after writing your cv it is advisable to use grammarly to check if there is any spelling error so zero issues with formatting consistent with font size so i will still mention still discuss on this formatting when i move into the slide i prepared for this for this section so we have skills and goals are consistent and correlate so your skills and your goals you know when you are writing a professional summary it also includes your goal what you aspire for so why your skill also must be in what must must, must align perfectly with your with your goals you have to be clear and concise keep your cv to one page in your ex we most people used to make mistake when they are giving when they are explaining their highlighting their experience in a company they worked for it might be difficult for instance someone who is like a junior developer or a junior engineer on the team and he is the only junior developer uh, so you do junior engineer and yours uh, like, he has like one direct line manager he has a bunch of work he has done so it is quite difficult for that kind of person to to have a, to tailor down his uh his experience however you still need you still have to find a way to do that so you have to be clear and concise in that so the next one is linked to your ten academy i don't think you have a ten academy profile for now so this is not applicable to you so no background colors icon or other graphics so this is not your cv is not a graphic designer cv if a graphic designer is designing is submitting a cv he, he can have he can explore his talent to have a you know a, a graphic like a cv but this is a professional cv and we want your recruiters to have good impression a good first impression about you so no logos and use of appropriate keywords matching the job posting however this is not for job posting for now but we still want you to assume that this wants you to put in your best to give assuming you want to use that particular seed for your job application now so i prepared this slide for us to show you the good cv and the bad cv then from there i will from there i will explain our the marking rubric the marking rubric now so in addition to sorry now in addition to this professional cv checklist so we also highlighted some uh some checklists here the accurate contact information include a link to so this has been explained we want them to be clickable ensure links are clickable take note of in, uh, international naming convention i mentioned this also relevant and targeted for experience so don't find someone who is applying for a role of junior machine learning engineer now and he studied uh let me say he studied a language in school let me say i studied my own native language in school yoruba language and i've worked as a newscaster before i've worked like a yoruba newscaster before it is not 
uh, it does not align with the kind of job role I want to apply for. So we should try to avoid that in our in our CVs. So use a consistent and readable font type and size. I will still explain this also and give more context to this font and size. You do not include any extra fancy formatting, just like the colors, all those logos and all. Minimal use of colors, it's preferably white and black. Be clear and concise. Keep your CV to one page since recruiters may not have time to, you know, a recruiter that has hundreds of CVs to review. So he or she wants something you can look at in the first glance and have an, an, an idea of what is in the CV. So if you have a bunch of tests without any clear uh, cut on the, what you actually what you actually writing, then that can be a, uh, a big concern. Send save and submitted as PDF. So these are the checklists we want you to include. You want you to consider when you are submitting your CV. So back to my to my slide. So now, when you are writing a CV, you want your CV to pass two mechanism, two review mechanism. Because when you are submitting your resume, you don't know your CV. You don't know who is going to mark, who is going to review your CV, if it is an AI or human being. So you should prepare your CV to pass both mechanism. So we have human review mechanism. Once so for me as a person, if I want to if I want to review a CV, I will look. Okay, is this CV clear? Is it attractive or informative? Attractiveness does not mean does not mean it should have like colors. It must have pictures or have uh, icons. Attractiveness is in form of formatting. So if your CV is well formatted, it will be attractive for anyone to know to scan through. So which means your CV must be must pass human review mechanism and also for the application tracking system which is the ATS, a lot of applications especially on linkedin when you submit an application is always filtered most of them are filtered by ATS. so you, you must ensure that your you are, so you are intentional about how you tailor your cv to ensure that it passes ATS uh ATS review so the next slide so these are the key sections you want your you want to have your name and your contact information at the top which are your personal information at the top of the of your page the professional summary maximum of 50 words it can be shorter but not short or it must, it must be concise then your experience i've explained this also and she wants you to have something i want your experience to be what you what you did and what was the effect of what you did so education your license and certification if you have professional certification we want you to you know explore that in your skill in your cv and we have uh, we have your skill also so those are the key sections we would like you to have in your in your cv so now this are the these are bad examples of cv if you look at the one on the left side this this particular one even without it is very very difficult for me as a person to travel this to travel through this cv now it's very very difficult for me to travel the cv i have qualification i have software education experience it is not well formatted this cv is not well formatted this person does not uh, make use of enough white space so even look at the software so it is it is not appealing to the high so to say it is not appealing to the high so look at the qualification creative and part designer who understand all it's about branding social media savvy and up to date with current web development those are not the kind of qualification we're talking about if you look at the let's look at the experience design and produce a monthly challenge newspaper this is so if you look at the experience it is always telling us what he did or what she did he didn't tell us okay after design and producing a monthly college newspaper what happened right so contributor stories, photos, and organic and original artwork. So these are not the kind of experience we want to have. So you can also have more critics to this to this particular CV now. So if you look at the one on the right side, that's the watermark of bad CV example. Okay, if you look at the work, you only have the the dates. You only have the just like for instance now this experience. You only have what this person did no company this person didn't have, didn't have the company or she didn't have the company she worked with nothing like the 
okay, the company is there, okay, we have the ZL Menopolis. Okay, sorry about that. So now for the curriculum vital for this particular one on the right side, this person added the company, added the role she did or she did. The year is there, but what are the things? What are the highlights of what you did for ABC Electronics Limited? Dana Corporation, what are the highlights of what you do when you are an IT IT assistant? What are the what are the what are the uh what are the highlight of the experience carried out there and also we look at the education we really have the education this is there so it is not well formatted all these referee this is very very shallow this is a shallow cv so to say this is shallow cv so to say so let's look at an example of what because as a recruiter if you look at this cv now it is not really really appealing it's not really appealing it's not like a, a CV that has information. It is not trying to convince a recruiter, yes, I am worthy of this particular role I'm applying for. So let's look at the good CV. Now, you can't compare any of these two to this. The difference is clear. So now, can you see this is more or less like a format to share? More or less like a format to share. You have your name on the left side, you have the your contact information on the right side, then we have professional summary. We have skills, we have qualification. Sorry. Sorry, can you put it on presentation mode for us, please? Thank you. Sorry. What do you say? Can you please put your presentation on presentation mode so the students okay. cannot see? Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Hello. Yeah. Sorry, I'm having difficulty in doing that. You should be. Otherwise, just zoom uh, in a little bit, maybe. What do you say? Uh, if you if you can't put it on presentation mode, maybe you can just zoom in a little bit. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Is it better now? A little bit. It's OK. OK, thank you. So if you look at the samples of good res of good CV now, we have the name and the contact information on the right side. We have professional profile or summary. So then we have the skills sets here. So if we, if on the, inside the skills, we have the technical skills, we have the soft skills, and we have like the software there. Then we have qualification and certificates. We have the professional experience here. So you can see this person uh, uses enough white spaces, well formatted. If you look at this one also, even though this one added some kind of color, it is still appealing. And uh, it is very very similar to this even the same format profile skills education um professional experience so this is the kind of cv you want to have and you have to be intentional about the kind of content like reducing you, especially when you're writing your experience you must be intentional to make it very concise while writing so now these are basically some of the importance of having a good cv it will speak of your skill and career plans you know after submitting your cv you are not there when maybe when the reporter wants to review so this speaks for you this is just passport it speaks for you it makes an impression on potential employer yes good first impression actually lasts longer if you don't a report i don't think a recruiter is going to look twice in a good resume before giving a decision let me give this person a chance after scanning for like three seconds or four seconds he or she knows the kind of candidate he wants to inter he wants to invite for a test or for an interview. So it makes you stand out from applicants looking for jobs. There are some job applications on LinkedIn. When you see them, they have, you see 1,000 applicants. Sometimes you see 800, 500 applicants. How do you make yourself different? How do you stand out from that kind of you know job pool? So it kickstarts your job search more easier. So when you have a good CV, 
even if anyone has okay, give me your CV, I can refer you. So even if Bella wants to refer you, sees a good CV, he or she will be eager to, you know, to assist you. So from here, let me move on to, let me move on to the marking rubric. So the marking rubric is, okay, how do we want to assess you for this challenge? This challenge is 100%. So how do we, you know, how do we mark you? What are, what are the things, what are the components in what we are looking for? We are looking for quality of your formatting. We are looking for how easy it is to digest key information at a glance. You know, when I check your CV, what are the things I can actually take away? Even on that 10 seconds or five seconds of glancing through it, so what are the level of professionalism? So I broke this down to, you know, some components. So for your rubric, so quality of your formatting, Okay, you know, when we talk of format, you're talking about your font type, your font size. You are not expected to be using like some kind of very stylish uh, font type. So your font size also must be, um, it must not be too big, apart from your name, that should at least be bigger than other text. So once your font size should be consistent throughout, we, must, we want you to use bulleted points. You don't, we don't want you to use like one, two, three. We want you to use bullet to highlight some of your some of your points we want your we want you to ensure you make use of the white space no matter how informative your cv want to look like you want you to be justified with your uh with your white space and chronological order when you're highlighting your school your experience in school your your education rather your job experience and all we want it to be from the latest to the uh to the later ones so then we have information at a glance now for a race for a recruiter that wants to check your cv i should be able to deduce some information from those five ten seconds of looking at your cv so i should be able to easily travel through your cv okay this person is this, after checking your name checking your professional summary looking at your skills then your skills is not aligning with your experience so that like it is easy for me to travel through your cv outline session when you have your section when i say outline session they are talking about your professional summary your education must be well outlined then we have your white space also you must ensure you make use of white that will give uh the recruiter access to your cv to okay this is what you are telling me here it's when your cv is not well combined. now these are the rubrics so the last one we will be looking at that we'll be considering is your level of professionalism when you are writing your your CV, okay, is your CV, are your wordings concise and clear? Are you, did you include technical keywords in your, maybe your experience, maybe your professional summary, you do include technical keywords, your experience summary, was this written in the format of what was done and the effect of what you did, and your contribution in numbers also, you want your contribution to work to have some statistics in your CV and completeness also, completeness of your experience. So uh, these are the, components that will determine how well you're doing your when you receive your cv these are the components we are going to use to grade you so uh also so your sorry about that so that's all for now so usefulness in real life you definitely the 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 purpose of this session is for you to work a good cv is the foundation of a successful career launch yes you properly outline cv shows both your past accomplishment and your potential so we are preparing you for global uh job opportunities so so then you can submit your this particular task on on 10x that's all for now so if you have any question any comments then you can disclose before you to ask any question thank you Please, you can ask your question, please. Okay, Manuel is asking a question. 
does the CV have to be as junior data engineer or can we use our own experience? Yes, you can use your own experience, but we want you to have a CV that is one page. We want to receive a one page CV. Another question, please. You can unmute your mic if you have any questions. Okay, hi. So um, I was wondering if we have to write the CV as if we are applying for a data engineering or email engineering job because uh, me personally, my previous job isn't really this is front end development. So uh, I'm on the experience uh, uh, tab. I think I'm going to be writing the previous experiences I have. So uh, how am I supposed to do this? Thank you. OK, yeah, thank you very much. Milat, did I get the pronunciation correctly? OK, so on the question you asked, yes, this session, this exercise is just for us to prepare you ahead of the kind of the format of writing a CV. Yes, you are here to acquire skill on maybe, I don't know your, your track for now, maybe machine learning or data engineering or Web3 or the, or the last one or here, I, I don't know yet. However, we want you to use, as I said to uh, Fanuel the other time, that yes, you can use your previous experience. You know, when you, after graduating at an academy, you have worked with a number of projects, you know, we can say yes, you have like a year, a year experience with an academy or so, or six months experience with an academy. Have you worked with storied projects? Then those are the projects that will constitute the kind of your information that will form up your CV to apply for a data engineering role or any track you desire. But for now, we just want you to you know, have a CV. You can make use of your front end experience, have it, but you want all the components we've mentioned to be taken care of. Do you get that? Yes, yes, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, I have some other questions there. Okay, Hussein asked, are we to use a stating template? Yes, we have just to make things easy for you. We 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 attached a link to the template to the CV templates in the career document so you can check. You can make use of the templates. Okay, Diriba asked, can we have a multiple CV depend on the position we are going to apply? Okay, this question should be, let me say, after the program or maybe towards the end of the program. You know, for now, you are not applying for a job yet. However, depending on the kind of CV you have, you can have a single CV but you must ensure you are updating your CV. But it is advisable to tailor your CV down to the kind of role you are applying for. So you can have multiple CVs. It can be two, it can be three. But those CVs will have something in common. The formatting is there. The formatting is there. But you should ensure that what you are applying for, the, the necessary keywords are included. You can have one CV and be updating it in tandem with the kind of role you are applying for. And if you have two CVs, maybe you are applying for a data engineering role or you are applying for machine learning role, you are good at machine learning, good at data engineering, you can have two separate CVs, but you must ensure these components must be in those two uh, CVs, depends on you. So saying, did I answer your question? Okay, so someone's hand is raised. Can you unmute yourself and, and ask the question or make a comment? So I have the asking a question here. Can we have, okay, sorry, I've answered that. Okay, Mosena asked, yes, what are the rules we should be targeting? Great question. Okay, the rules we be targeting it be after your program year is targeting role of data engineer, you know, machine learning engineer, 
Web3 engineer. So it depends on, we have some that are so good that they can even, after that program, they can be a full stack. So it depends on you, but after this program, you definitely have a track. Either you are going through the track of Web3, AI, machine learning, or data engineering. So those are the kind of roles you should be targeting. Abraham, yes, you can use the templates we've provided. Fanuel, can we use other templates or only the suggested ones? Well, you can use other templates, but don't forget the, the checklists I mentioned when I was giving my presentation. Those checklists are important. That if you want to, you want a one-page CV, right? And if also if you look at the career exercise, we have requirements. We have requirements. So those requirements, you must ensure you fulfill those requirements. We don't want colors. We don't want icons. We don't want. To, it's not even how find your CVs. What what you are so concerned about is the formatting. How good is the formatting? The content of your CV. Is that okay, Fanny? All right, thank you. So, Biruk is asking a question. I have one job experience for short time. For short time as freelance. Should I put it in experience? Yes, you can put it in your experience for now. You can put it in your experience. Biruk. So, Mesfin is asking another question. Should we include really related experience only? What do you suggest? Yes, for now, for now, you have the opportunity. You want to you want to explore actually. But definitely, if you're applying for maybe when you are job ready, you definitely want to apply to include the experience that is related to the kind of role you are applying for. But for now, what you are so particular about for now, you can even look at if you go to the rubric I shared with you. Okay, we're intentional about okay your formatting, intentional about okay, how easy is it for us to you know get information by just glancing through your CV, right? And how professional is your CV? Like the professionalism you uh you explored in your CV. So that is that. So Mesfin, did that answer your question? Okay, uh, um, I, sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that. So, okay, but Rudolf, I think that is okay. Did I pronounce yes. it? <laughs> Rudolf Segbeji. Rudolf, you right? Yes. Okay, thank you. So, you asked the question that you have the latest uh, template. Can I adapt the content, the content to that template, or should I use necessary your so anyways the template you have what we want is your okay you're i want to believe everyone here already has a cv right but we want having go, after going through the after going through the the career documents we are going to share i don't know if pascal has actually shared that with you after going through that you will know okay what are the things i need to do to my this is not like you're writing a fresh fresh resume but you should take note of the requirements we've highlighted in the career documents we are sharing with you. So if the template you have or if the CV you have before is in tandem with what we are what we are expecting from you, you can definitely you know uh use the content you have there. Okay, you you can unmute your mic. Are you your hands are raised. Can you just unmute and and speak? Okay. Are you your hands are raised? Can you can you talk? Can you unmute your mic?
So a year I was I was sorry I was muted. Can you you wanted to say something a year? Please unmute your mic and speak. Please, if you have any other question, you can reach out to us on Slack, my, myself, Pascal, or Pehovelo on any uh, career related question. So, yeah, Pascal has shared the documents here, so you can also kindly explore it. Then the deadlines for this submission is 8 p.m. UTC. You can always reach out if you have any questions on this, on this task or uh the task assigned to you yesterday on uh, ideas to improve uh to improve the world hussein you said what a title above my name i don't think i get the question On the, on the templates, let me check. This is one for me, let me check. Okay, can I use my... Okay, Pascaline, So the title, I want to believe the title is maybe junior software engineer, junior data engineer. A person can give more context to that. Can I use my already prepared CV? No. We want to have, want you to have a, a CV for this. We want you to create a CV. Though you can make use of your content, but we don't want you to use already prepared CV that you've made before. This is a challenge. This is an exercise. Mubarak. Is that okay? All right. So, mm -hmm. any, other, any other question, please? Pastor, I want to say something. Um, yes. Re uh, regarding the same question about uh, your current title that is above your name, it can be your current title if you're currently working or currently having an internship. But if you don't have, please feel free to delete that. Okay. Thank you, Pascaline. So additional asked, are we including only relevant skills related to the academy training and goal? This is it. Uh, additional, if you, after writing your professional summary, you will know the kind of summary you've developed, the kind of professional summary you've developed, and it is advisable to ensure you use skills that are in tandem with that professional summary. Is that okay? So, okay, okay, okay. I mean, relevant skills, prior experience, and education. Yes, for your, for now, for now, for now, you can include your experience, your prior experience. But advisably, it is better for us for you to have a CV that has that is consistent. When your professional summary must be consistent with your skills, must be consistent with your education and your experience. Is that okay? Additional. All right. Um uh Abdullah, probably yes. I can share my screen and show them a few things because I can see many are sending me requests to edit but this is a template you don't have to edit it because everyone is going to be using this so here's how you can copy and be able to own your own to use your own you have to come here on file and click on make a copy when you click on make a copy it's going to give you this and then just click make a copy and then you will be having this it's copying itself you will be having your own editable file. Super easy, super easy. Then here you will be having to write your name. You can keep the same font 
and write your title here if you currently have a job or an, an internship or if you don't have please feel free to just do this and delete it oh sorry let me bring it back and then put your phone number here your email the website if you have a portfolio website or your github link and uh put here your linkedin link if you have and also your address just your city and the country it's super enough then put here your professional summary please ensure that you are using it's a summary for you like maximum 50 words like how do you define yourself as a professional in your own career like in your own field let's say you are a software developer so just make sure that you put here like a summary about who you are you are a software developer probably passionate about this and that you know just make it relevant you can read this this description here and then about the skills put here your technical skills separate them by a comma let's say if you're good at um uh how do we call it java and um um let's say python or anything else just technical skills put them here separate them by a comma and then come here add here your soft skills let's say leadership skills, separate them by a comma as well. And then here put the software skills that, uh, sorry, software tools that you have been interacting with. Like if you get a job right now and they require you to use that kind of specific tool or specific, um, yeah, that specific tool, then mention it here. About the technical skills, it can also be about uh, your so the software language that you, you have memorized like you have specialized yourself in just put it here and then here put in your work experience you can put minimum three work experiences but if you have many feel free also to add them but don't put something that that was like 10 years ago you know like an internship that was like 10 years ago put here something very recent and very relevant to your um to your background and to your work experience. And then here, when you get on the education, just mention the name or the major performed, and then the school name, the country, the start date, like when did you start university or your master's, and then the completion date. And also remember to add your specialization here because I will tell you, uh, for instance, you did Let's say to people, okay, people like me who don't have technical backgrounds, like me who did economics, but I did economics, but I majored in monetary economics. You get you get what I'm saying. Just put here your specialization. Make sure that it's short. That's why we want to be your work experience to be as precise and very recent and make sure that it's just one page. Is that more clear? If you don't have three uh, related experience, it's all right. Just put there what you have and make sure that you are elaborating it enough. You know, just don't give like half page. You can elaborate it enough, put there your achieve. Oh, and something I, I forgot to talk about, when you are describing what you were doing, ensure that you are focusing on achievements more than responsibilities because responsibilities everybody knows if you are a software developer we know what you're responsible for just put there your achievement why you were working there what have you achieved and then hussein who said if we don't have three relevant experiences just put there any kind of experience you have you can also add a uh, kind of projects that you developed and someone can be able to read it from your github or, or or LinkedIn or where else you posted about it. Or if you just had like one experience, one project developed, just make sure that you are detailing it enough to fit it, to fit it on one page, you know? Like have yourself a CV uh, because at the end of the day, we aim to really place you all, when you get enrolled, we aim to place you all in different opportunities that are out there to our employer partners. So what kind of CV do you want us to give them if this was the moment for you?
what kind of resume, what kind of CV do you want us to give them? Is that more clear? Give me some thumbs up. Okay, yes. Okay, thank you so much, everyone. Please, I have a question. Yes, Rodolph. Okay, uh, for what I have understood, it's like uh, this CV we're going to sub submit tonight will be the last one. Yes, today, 8 p.m. Today, 8 p.m. It's part of the deliverables today. And you know that all deliverables per day, they have to be submitted before 8 p.m. UTC. Yeah, so uh, there's no any opportunity or any uh, chance to submit another CV uh, in the future? Yeah, oh, there is going to be that opportunity. For now, we are going to be practicing how a good looking CV for yourself uh, should be looking like. So make sure that you're practicing using this one and make sure you're submitting actually the best CV. You know, this is part of the exercise. Okay. Understand? Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank okay. You. Welcome, yeah. welcome. Okay, I can see more people say it. Yes, it's clear. If there are no any other questions, it's all right. I have one you... question. Yes, Abdi. So my question is in the education part. It says mm -hmm. to add um, name of major performance and also add specialization here. What would be mm -hmm. the specialization part indicating for someone that just has a degree in a field? Oh, then there is no specialization. Anything that is not relevant to you, you can please just keep it. All right. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Mm. And then also Hussein said, uh, Pascaline, by yesterday's presentation was a draft only, and we can update and replace it later today. Oh, you, Hussein, I think you mean about the career exercise for yesterday, about the ideas to change the world. Yes, that was your work, and we are going to be looking into it and give you feedback by tomorrow, Thursday, and then you can update it and give your final work by Friday clear like you got it right correct then um dorcas said someone share the link to the cv template i'm sharing right now dorcas there you go all right okay over to you again uh abdullah thank you so much for the space okay thank you everyone if you have any other question, please you can reach out to us on, on Slack, then we'd love to assist. So I think